a prediction called Lipsky made over 75 years ago. You can find it in Science and Sanity, page 557. <clears throat> he said, mankind represents an interdependent, time-binding class of life. And any group of people who possess physical means for destruction <coughs> and still preserve infantile standards of evaluation become a menace to the culture of the whole human race. Now, if you took the plane lately, you would have experienced that control that has been applied 10,000 and more miles away to change our behavior based on infantile standards of evaluation. But it's not just the Taliban or Al Qaeda or who's the other one? ISIS, the name. They're not the ones, not the only ones that are creating a menace. Any group of people who possess physical means for destruction, and that includes so-called democracies. My focus is not on time binding. Unfortunately, we have got time bound and stuck on that. We don't have to learn about time binding. We do it naturally. Because again, in time, in, in Manual of Humanity and Science and Sanity, you can find several mention that we are natural time binders. We constantly improve things, whether we are aware of it or not. Just um, changing the draft of a letter involves time binding. If you look around the room here, you, I don't think you can see anything that is, does not involve time binding. And whoever did these things, build these structures, didn't know anything about time binding, but they were time binding, which involves just building on and improving what others did before. Hmm? So what we have to move from natural time binding, we have to move from that to conscious time binding. <clears throat> we have to become aware of what we have been doing and how we have been doing over the centuries. We have to time bind on our time binding. We have to become conscious time binders. Now, there are many ways to do that. And one way is to become aware, more awake to what we're doing and how we're doing, while we're doing. It's not easy. It takes years. Mm -hmm. See if you recognize this. Recognize it? Okay. Who would like to, um, as a conscious time binding refrain, who would like to sing those, just those two lines from my time binding, conscious time binding, on those two lines from Annie Get Your Gun? Who would like to sing that? Yes. Anything you can No, no, come up here, come up, perform, come on, perform. Oh, huh. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. Because this is what I wrote. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> anything I can do, I can do better. I can do anything better than me. <laughs> no, I can't. Yes, I can. <laughs> 
anything I can do, I can do better. I can do anything better than me. Yeah? And here's something. This one is a time binding from, um, conscious time binding from Annie Getigon. That you just sang there, thank you. And um, this is when I, I composed this one. I do what I do to discover what I'm doing, to learn about what I'm doing, to learn from what I'm doing, how to do better what I'm doing. How many times have you started something before you realize what you're into? <laughs> yeah? So we do what we do to discover what we're doing, or we can be conscious and do that. Yeah? And in doing something, we learn about doing that thing. And we learn from it how to do better. So these are just simple ways that we can become more conscious time binders. But being conscious time binders is not enough. These fantastic achievements, so skyscrapers, mm -hmm. driving around on the moon. Lately I saw we're um, taking cells from uh, fellow's nostrils and injecting them into his spine and he was able to start walking. He was paralyzed from the neck down. And he, those cells in his spine now helped him to start walking again. These are fantastic achievements. Terrifying achievements like being able to use a computer, press a button, and kill millions or hundreds or whatever number of people 10,000 miles away through drones and missiles and bombs. So time binding has both its nice aspects and its terrifying destructive aspects. So we need more conscious time binding, but in addition we need conscious time binding ethics. We don't talk too much about that, but that's so important because the ethics is our guideline, it's our standard, it's the restraining factor. It helps us to restrain ourselves from the excesses of time binding. If we don't have the ethics to hold back, we will continue doing what we have been doing. I've prepared some posters which elaborate on what I've been saying here. And this, these are some of the results of my many years of conscious time binding. Now the next time you see a little baby in a carriage or anywhere, think of this. Terrorists were once babies. So without conscious time binding ethics to restrain ourselves, we won't avoid many of the excesses. And Kozipsit thinks of a rote of conscious time binding ethics as acknowledging and appreciating what we have learned and what we owe, what, what we owe to present and past time binders. And also accepting our responsibility for future generations. Those little babies, they don't start out as terrorists. So we might wonder how did they become that way? I would like to um, just give a short overview of the, the posters here. Yeah. 
So this one is on um, Causips's concerns and conscious time binding predictions. And I have selected from Science and Sanity about 10 or more of predictions he made, which you can experience for yourself if you just become more aware of what's happening in the world, not just in New York or United States, but in the world. Because he's talking about human beings. Most people don't think of Kozybski as an anthropologist or psychoanalyst. But I think of Kozybski as an anthropologist because he is psychoanalyzing or he psychoanalyzed human race, what we have been doing, and looking at our behavior from his conscious time binding, he came up with principles in general semantics that we can apply it. I don't, he, he, I think he was very, um, he was very hopeful for the sanity of the human race, but I, I, I think we're getting more and more insane. I don't think we are ever going to have the sanity of the human race. It's not, it's against the universe. What I mean by that, the universe is one of excessive differences. I don't think there's anyone around or will come around that will be powerful enough to control six billion human beings thinking differently. Okay? Because you come along and you s decide that, well, this is the way we should go. Maybe the word should. And somebody say, why, why, why that way? Right? And there's infinite number of directions that you could go. Infinite in terms of time. Each moment, you can say, well, we have a circle around. You can go in this, that, that direction. But the next time, we can go in this, that, that direction. It's infinite. So we are very different. So for me, I think the Institute should focus on individuals developing themselves, not focus on the race. I think that would be a bit unsane. So this is about, yes? Yeah. This is about conscious time planning, and your time goes. Eh? I have to skip a few. The one I'll mention is um, this one is on. Practicing conscious time binding. To develop skills in any area, we need the language. We need to acquaint ourselves with the language. And so this is a set of general semantic terms and scientific and mathematical terms, which when we acquaint ourselves with these terms, we can expand our horizons. We can learn to do better and hopefully each one of us will achieve what I call little pockets of sanity. <laughs> <laughs>